Well, look what I just got delivered today. <laughs> I'm really excited to get this. And you may be wondering, why in the world is he posting this on his YouTube channel? Well, it has to do with my YouTube channel. No, it's, it's not about Teslas in particular, but uh, on my YouTube channel, uh, one of the most arduous things I have to do is upload a video. Currently, I'm on DSL here in Northwest Wyoming, and uh, while the internet service is pretty reliable and, and reasonably fast, uh, I'm far enough away from uh, the connection center that my upload speeds are around 750 to 800 kilobits per second, and that's the best they can do for me. What that means is if I upload like an eight minute video, it can take as long as eight or nine hours to upload that video to YouTube. And uh, Starlink is apparently promising anywhere from 15 to 20 megabits per second upload speeds over the satellite dish. And I'm really looking forward to trying this out. So let's see what's in the box here. Oh, got some instructions. Looks like uh, point the dish connected up. And then uh, looks like final setup over Wi-Fi. I'm just going to stand and uh, looks like a wireless router and the power block. Everything is all pre-connected here, so it looks like you just essentially plug it into the wall and run the setup. Hey, uh, looks like some kind of regulatory notice. Some other instructions that I can see. I'm told we've got 100 feet of cable. Here's the dish. I hope to mount this on the roof, but I'm going to have to figure out some way to keep it above the snow level. But as a temporary measure, I'm going to go ahead and set it up in the driveway, hook it up, see how long it takes to hook it up, and uh, see what kind of speeds we get. Okay, I've got the uh, antenna set up in a temporary location out on my driveway. It's initially pointed towards the north. And first thing we need to do is open up the Starlink app on the phone, and we need to check for obstructions. And what the app does is it finds your location and uses the camera on your phone to sort of give you a little virtual view of the sky. And you can pan it around and see if there's any obstructions. And this is all based on your location and the current positions of the satellites. Okay, I've got my temporary location. Here's the wire coming in from the dish itself. This is the uh, power block. And it's uh, color-coded, so there's a white one and there's a black one. Black one, obviously. This goes to the satellite dish. And then this is the uh, wireless router. Pretty cool design. Come on back here, all we have is essentially is an auxiliary port. This should go to your router and your home network. And this goes to the PoE. There's no on and off switch, so we just plug it in. And this is lining up now. We're supposed to go to the app. So we'll switch over to the app on the phone. And now the phone app is going to walk us through the rest of the process. Everything is connected and plugged in. Now it wants us to set up the Starlink Wi-Fi. I've given it a unique name and assigned a password. And now it wants us to connect the phone to the Starlink Wi-Fi, which I've done. And we need to wait a few minutes for the antenna to find the best position for satellite reception. And after that's all done, we can now do a speed test. So here we go. Looks like it's ramping up fairly quickly. Wow, 160 megabits per second. That's exceptional. Ooh, 170 megabits per second. Okay, next is the upload portion. And let's see. Looks like we're getting certainly better than 20 megabits per second. And boom, 22 megabits per second. Now I'd say that's quite an improvement over my current DSL speed, which is about 12 megabits per second down and 850 kilobits per second up. A big winter storm is about to hit our area and they are calling for significant snow overnight. This will be a great test to see how well the system works during a major winter storm. We currently have heavy overcast skies and the snow is starting to pick up. 
Well, there's been about a half inch that's come down so far, but it's pretty early in the storm. We'll probably get eight or ten inches overnight. Let's take a look at this antenna and see what's happening with the snow that's fallen. Uh, it looks like the electronics provide enough heat just to melt what's currently falling on the dish. And that's what I've been told. There's a lot of snow in the air. We want to check the performance. So here we go. Here's a speed test given the atmospheric conditions and the snowfall that you just saw. And so far it looks like there may be a little bit of degradation, but it's not horrible. Wow, 100 megabits per second. Oh, even better, 110. Well, that's uh, more than acceptable. Down in the lower left-hand part of the screen, you can see a radar image of the what's in the atmosphere in my area. And the red dot is just about where I'm located. And over on the right is essentially a live view of the satellite coverage. And you, the red dot is exactly where my location is as well. I'm still trying to do the uh, finish up the upload speed, 11 megabits per second. Well, it's been a couple hours since the storm first started, and we are into nightfall. Let's take a closer look at the dish. The snow that has fallen so far has continued to melt. Of course, the temperatures are a little bit warm, about 30 degrees. So far, it looks like about four inches of snow on the ground. Well, we'll continue to check this and see how it performs. Okay, here's another speed test under the atmospheric conditions that I just showed you. Looks like the download speed, 47 megabits per second. Now for the upload portion. Eighteen megabits per second. Now I want to do a, a real-world upload test under these snowy conditions to my YouTube channel. What I'm going to do is select a three-minute file, which is in red, rendered in 4K. Let's just see how long it takes. Let's start the process. Let's get a timer going. I won't make you wait for the whole thing through the magic of video editing. We'll zoom all the way to the end so you can see the result. Just about done. And boom. Three minutes and 37 seconds. Just as a comparison, I did the same test with my DSL, and it turned out to be 81 minutes. Okay, we've had the Starlink set up now for about 24 hours. And this is the next morning. Snow is still continuing to fall, and it's very overcast. It's actually pretty dark. Let's go out and take a look at the Starlink. Ooh, definitely uh, snow accumulation. Let's do a little measurement here. Looks like we got pretty close to uh, eight inches overnight. Now it's not particularly cold. Let's go see what's happening with the dish. Very interesting. Water of the snow essentially is melted off. You can see there's slush down here from where it's melted off. Well, I don't know what will happen when it's colder, but uh, based on what I've seen, at least in the first 24 hours, snow should not be an issue. Well, I've only lived with this Starlink system for 24 hours, but so far I'm very impressed. Both the upload speeds and the download speeds are a big improvement over the DSL that I'm currently living with. When I first ordered this thing, I was a little bit concerned about performance degradation during snowstorms because it does snow an awful lot here. And even though I've seen some performance degradation with cloud cover and heavy snows, uh, it's still two or three times faster than my DSL was. So I think I'm just fine with that. I think this is a real game changer for those of us who live in rural parts of the world. Having the ability to so quickly and easily set up high-speed internet access is, is just amazing. Now, of course, if you have high-speed internet 
fiber to your home, you probably wouldn't want to go this route. Uh, the latencies are a little bit higher, and then it's also a little bit weather dependent. SpaceX is calling this beta version of the program right now a better than nothing test. And uh, right now it's much better than what I currently have, and I'm very, very pleased. I've been following SpaceX for a fairly long time, and I think their goal of bringing high-speed internet to more remote and rural areas of the world is really admirable. It's just amazing to me to, to think of the technology that's rolled up into that little satellite antenna and the sat all those satellites circling overhead. Really, really cool. Anyway, that's it for this video. I know it's a little departure from what I've normally been posting, but I thought I'd just share this wonderful information. So until next time, be safe and be kind, and I hope to see you in the next video.